videos. Hi folks and welcome to Open Analysis Live. So today we have a quick tip video for you uh, where we're going to show you how to unpack Revil or Sodo, Sodi no Kibi, what a terrible name that is, um, and how to use Sila to build the imports for dynamic imports. So this is where um, the unpack sample actually has a dynamic import address table that's built at runtime. Uh, so normally there wouldn't actually be an import address table. We're going to show you guys how to fake it and actually create one with uh, Sila. So this is something that you probably wouldn't normally do. You'd probably write a script for Ida or something like that. But in this particular case, uh, we had a fellow reverse engineer ask us how we would do it if uh, they didn't have access to Ida Pro. So they were working and they didn't have access to Ida Pro, so they weren't able to build a script um, to build the imports for the sample. So they wanted to know if there was a way to do it uh, dynamically with x64 debug and Sila. So we're gonna show you guys how to do that here today. But before we jump into that, a little bit of housekeeping. So Sean and I will both be at DEF CON this year. Uh, we're doing a workshop as per usual. Unfortunately, it's all full up already, but we're going to be uh, walking around and whatnot. So if you see us, say hi. Uh, we have some swag to give out, um, and uh, maybe we can give you guys a little hint about this uh, secret project that we've been working on for a while. I think some of you guys might have already kind of figured it out. So with that, let's jump over to our debugger and uh, start taking a look at what we have here. So we're going to load the sample up in x64 debug and we're gonna set a couple breakpoints so we can unpack it. Now we don't know exactly uh, how it's unpacking, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a few breakpoints here. Uh, so we're gonna set one on create process internal in case it creates a new process. So that's the first thing, we wanna stop there uh, and sort of assess where we're at. Then we're gonna create one on uh, virtual protect in case it tries to overwrite a protected section. So perhaps it's gonna overwrite one of the PE sections. And then we're gonna set one on virtual alloc. So we're gonna jump to virtual alloc. We follow the jumps to get to the return, set a breakpoint on the return because of course the newly allocated virtual memory address is returned in EAX. So anytime virtual alloc is hit, uh, we just look at EAX and that has the newly allocated memory address in it. Okay, so now we're gonna start debugging. Uh, the first thing we hit is virtual protect, but of course we haven't allocated any memory so we don't really care. Let's just keep debugging. Now we hit the return from virtual allocate so we can follow EAX and dump. There's our memory section. Keep debugging and boom, what do we have here? A nice PE file. Surprise, motherfucker. So let's dump out that PE file and uh, that's it. That's how easy it is to unpack uh, Revil. So uh, we dump it out to the, uh, to the desktop here. We follow in memory, then we dump that section and uh, we'll just save it out with pack name and then the address that we saved, that we uh, dumped it from. Right, so let's take a look at it in uh, Ida here and see what's going on. So this is the free version of Ida. There's no scripting uh, or anything like that enabled. There's no debugger. It's just a simple disassembler with the graph view, no decompiler or anything like that. So uh, we take a look at it here and uh, jumping into this function, we can see already there's something strange. And so that's gonna tell us that there's probably some address uh, for an API call that should be resolved there but there is no address there currently. And so that's telling us that there's probably gonna be some dynamic imports being resolved here. Now, there's only one function that's called before this call, so we know that that's probably the function where the dynamic imports are being built. So let's go and check that out now. All right, that's just a jump. And then we can see here's a nice loop. It's looping through a bunch of stuff and it looks like these are probably the hash values for the hashed APIs. So it looks like we've probably found our dynamic import address table building function. So we can just label that. And then what we can do is look for that function in the debugger. And we're going to actually run past that function, just right past it until the next uh, line below it. And that should build all the imports for us. Then we're gonna take our dump and then we're gonna use Scylla to uh, rebuild those imports. And because that function is already resolved them dynamically, uh, Silas should be able to build an import table, no problem. So uh, let's jump over here to our debugger. We're gonna load up that dumped file. Of course, it has the bin extension, so we have to see all files. Load it up here, run until the entry point. So in x64 debug, uh, they will always put a breakpoint on the entry point. So you can always just run once uh, as soon as you load the file and you should stop on the entry point. 
So now that we've stopped there, we know our, where our place is, just referring to the Ida graph. Uh, we know that that first function there is going to be the uh, import address table resolver. So let's actually, uh, here we're gonna just label it for you, <laughs> um, just so we know what it is. Uh, so let's label it import address table builder, and then we're gonna run past it. Uh, and then boom, we can see it's already labeled those uh, AP, those D words are now labeled as APIs. So we know that we've resolved the import address table. So now what we're gonna do is use Scylla to take a dump of this process. So we'll open up Scylla, dump, get our imports. It found the import table and there we go. There's all the imports that have been resolved. So now we can fix our dump. Okay. And now we can take a look at that fixed dump and make sure that the imports are all set. So let's look at it bear first, just to make sure it's valid and the imports are set. So there we go, there's the import table. And now let's take a look at it in Ida. And in Ida, of course, look, all the imports nicely resolved. Uh, so we can see them here. And if we jump into a function, uh, we can just see that there's, you know, all the imports have been resolved here. So uh, that's all there is to it. Now you guys might have noticed I made one little mistake here uh, while I was recording this. And it, that is if we go to the start here, um, you can see that the start starts a little bit lower um, in the binary than where it does in the uh, original binary that we unpacked. So it's a couple calls down. It's a couple instructions down. And the reason for that is because when I did the dump, I uh, forgot to change the OEP address and OEP defaults to where the uh, EIP pointer is pointing. So when I did the dump, I did it after I had returned from that import address table building function. And so now it's set a new uh, original entry point for this uh, PE file to where that EIP was. Now this may not necessarily be a bad thing because it means that you could probably run this file and it, it would probably run. Um, but it means that you're going to be missing some of the code, uh, the setup code. And that sort of leads me to the last uh, thing I want to mention about this technique. So this technique, we definitely do not advise doing this. Um, this is a, a crazy dirty hack to use if you want to be lazy and you don't have Ida Pro, so you can't write a script to properly label the imports. Um, what you're doing here is you're basically corrupting the PE file by adding a bunch of code onto it that doesn't exist um, in order to make it easier to reverse engineer. So um, the right way to do this would be to load the clean dump that we dumped out in the first stage in IDA, then find out how they're resolving the imports and write a small IDA script to actually label the imports. So it's just labeling them in IDA, you're not actually modifying the binary. The way we do it here, you're actually modifying the binary. So that means that if you wanted to say uh, reverse engineer how they're doing the import building, um, if that was important for some reason for your research, uh, you wouldn't have access to that information uh, in this binary. You would have to load the other one. So again, this isn't a technique that we would use if we were trying to do a full reverse engineering of the binary. But if we just kind of wanted the imports quickly to see what was going on, you know, we didn't have access to Ida Pro and we just had, you know, access to a debugger. This is a quick way to sort of do it and, and see what's going on. So hopefully this helps. Um, hopefully you guys can use this and uh, it definitely makes it easier to reverse engineer if you have those imports labeled. Um, so hopefully you guys can use this trick. Now there is gonna be a bit of a break before our next tutorial video, because like I said, we're our way at DEF CON and we have this project that we're working on on the side, we continue to work on it. Um, so there's gonna be a bit of a delay, but we are still working on an in-depth reverse engineering tutorial uh, where we go through sort of from uh, the beginning to the end of trying to build a config extractor. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, keep exposing mechanics behind the malware, stay curious.